everybody. I hope you are doing well. And this is another part of uh, extra material that we're doing as we are covering the gifts of the Spirit at RLC on Sundays. And it's just too much information for us to cover in a reasonable amount of time. And so instead of turning the Holy Spirit series into a never ending series, we decided to do some of this extra content. So hopefully you can go a little bit deeper and then give you maybe some encouragement to continue to deep dive into some of the gifts of the Spirit. Now, as we go into this, today we're going to talk about two, but before we do that, it's important to understand the context and understand the foundation. That is the context, first of all, is throughout the book of Corinthians, Paul is answering questions that they've been asking him. And so he's going through here and he's talking about how to do life together how to do church together, what the ecclesia, the body of Christ, is supposed to look like when doing church and life together. So in all these chapters, he's talking about different ways we get together and do different things. And then chapter 11, he talks about, you know, uh, dressing modestly for good reasons uh, when coming together. And then he talks about how to do the Eucharist, you know, communion together. And after he's doing all this together talk and how to serve one another, then he pivots into chapter 12. And he says... I don't want you to be unaware of the gifts of the Spirit. So he's saying, I don't want you to, to misunderstand what these are all about. These are all about, as he's been saying up until now, they're all about two things, honoring God by serving others. So one of the reasons why I think a lot of people misunderstand the gifts of the Spirit and are probably not being used in the gifts of the Spirit is our point of view is wrong. We're looking at how do they affect me? How can I enjoy the gifts? Me, me, me. And what Paul is saying is, that's not the way this is. This is not about you. This is about how you are going to help everybody else and bless others. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is to realize that you don't do this. The Holy Spirit uses you and does it through you. So it's not something you manufacture. It's not something that you create. It's something that you allow the Holy Spirit in cooperation with you to do through you. Okay, so once we do that, this is not one where you get to pick and choose what you want. The Bible is very clear when it says that the Holy Spirit uses us in the gifts that he chooses for his purposes. So that being said, today we're going to talk about two of the gifts of the Spirit, and one is a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. Now, depending on the translation that you have, you know, it may sound a little bit different because translations all come from the Greek uh, uh, language, what it was originally written in. And depending on the translator, they may have tried to give us some extra clarity. And like, for instance, the NLT, New Living Translation, says wise advice and clear understanding, I believe it is. And the ESV says, because um, what I'm reading today, the ESV says that it is uh, utterance of wisdom and utterance of knowledge. The King James says word of wisdom, word of knowledge. So what did those mean? And how do I know when I am being used by the Holy Spirit in these gifts? Well, first of all, let's talk about the word or the utterance of wisdom. Let's not go to our experiences, and there probably are a lot of great experiences, and that's wonderful. And I just, I don't want to go there because there's so many of those. Let's just stick with what the Word of God says, okay? So what the Word of God says is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So it starts with the fear of the Lord, and then wisdom, according to the book of Proverbs, is knowledge plus understanding and that equals wisdom. So once you have the foundation of the fear of the Lord, respect, honoring God, honoring his authority in the world and the universe, then on, on that, you have knowledge plus understanding equals wisdom. So it's wise advice, wisdom given by the Lord. So what you could say is, is understanding of how to move forward in a particular situation that didn't come from you, but it came from the Holy Spirit moving through you. So what does this look like with the lens of serving others? Well, someone's in a situation where they really need some wisdom on what to do in their life. They've got a problem. They've got a situation and they're praying about what to do. Well, what the Holy Spirit can do sometimes in your life is then when they come to you and they say, hey, I'm praying through this. I don't know what to do. Do you have any wise advice for me? Well, there's two different kinds of advice you could give. You could have advice that you've earned you can have advice that maybe you've earned, but then the Holy Spirit brings it back to your remembrance that you can then give to them. Because remember, it's not about you, it's about serving them. And so someone comes up and asks you a question, then all of a sudden you go, wait a minute, I completely forgot about something I went through in my life and how that blessed my life. I can't even, I can't even believe I remembered this. Let me tell you what it was. And then it just speaks directly to what they were going through. That is one of the ways 
the Holy Spirit can use you and wise advice or a word of wisdom to speak wisdom into someone else's life. That's, that's a way that could happen, okay? The second one is a word of knowledge. So wisdom is knowledge plus understanding equals wisdom. A word of knowledge or a clear understanding, that's what knowledge is, is knowledge is understanding a situation as far as in so so knowledge is a is a deal where you have a a clear understanding of a situation and if it's given by god then it is a situation that you wouldn't have any prior information on it's having information you wouldn't otherwise have i know sometimes there's been something that's happened in my life where i'm praying to a situation and i don't know and what to do and then someone will call me and they will say listen i don't know if this is god or not I just know I was just praying for you, and all of a sudden, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to tell you this. And I, they, I had not talked to them about the situation. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, they didn't know what was going on, but then all of a sudden, they tell me something that is exactly the information I'm dealing with, and they didn't know. That is the gift of clear understanding, of knowledge that they couldn't have acquired anywhere else but from God. Now, why would that be important? How could God use that to bless someone else's life? Well, one way is it builds your faith. Second of all, is it can speak straight to a situation because maybe you're in a situation where you've got so much pain, so much something that's going on, whatever it is, that you're not thinking clearly anymore. You're thinking in panic mode. You're thinking, ah, uh, you know, whatever. So you can't, you can't, I think, I honestly think God wants to speak to you directly as much as possible. Sometimes because of pain and brokenness and stuff, we just can't hear God. There's too much in the way. And so God will speak to us through someone else who's being used by the Holy Spirit in that moment. And they just say, you know what? I don't know, but I just got this, I just got this, this thought that this is what's going on. And it's not wisdom, it is understanding information they wouldn't have had otherwise. And then you go, wow, that's exactly it. That, that's exactly it. So that's how knowledge can work. And a lot of times these will work in tandem with one another. But there's a lot of different ways that the Holy Spirit can express these gifts through you. So that's not limited to that, but that is a little bit deeper understanding of where that comes from, from a biblical worldview. And I always say this, I say this probably out there in one of these videos. Don't take my word for whether it's real or not. If you think it's real, then you study the scripture, you come to your own conclusion, not based on a, a worldview you've had before, not based on an emotion, but based on what God's word says. And then if you think it's possibly real, then just say, Holy Spirit, if that gift is real, can you show it to me? Either by doing it in my life or by rec uh, me receiving it, just so I can know what this is and then watch what God does. Now, here's the thing. God may not do it in your life. God does whatever he wants to do, but he might. So why not give him a chance? So I hope you enjoy that. I'll see you next time for another one of the spiritual gifts and just opening ourselves up to whatever God wants to do in us. Mm -hmm.